Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture nine. And in this segment, we're going to be looking at the idea of a deformation flow pattern and some of the physical consequences that go with the uh, deformation patterns that we can see in the atmosphere. So first, let's go ahead and define what we mean by a deformation pattern. So the whole idea behind a deformation pattern is you have winds going towards a common point along one axis and then winds going away from a common point along another axis. And just using a verbal description may not be very uh, illustrative, so let's go ahead and take a look at an illustration to uh, get a better idea of what exactly we mean by all this word salad that we have up on the screen here. So the whole idea, of, so again, uh, deformation involves a converging wind field along on one axis. So you can see here I have, I'm using the y-axis to illustrate this. As you go along the y-axis, you can see these arrows in red, which represent the wind. You can see those arrows are all converging to a common point here, which is at the center of the screen and then diverging along another axis. And you can see as we go in the x direction, the wind is going away from a common point. So along the y axis, the wind is all converging to a common point, and along the x axis, the wind is diverging from a common point. It's all going away from the common point. And then to maintain some sort of continuity, you'll usually see something that looks like this. The flow kind of goes, uh, kind of curves in the direction of the divergent axis. So it starts off going in the direction of the convergent axis and then turns in the direction of the divergent axis. So that's what we mean by converging along one axis, in this case the y-axis, and diverging along the x-axis. But you can rotate this picture around to get to sort of uh, manipulate the axes, but this is basically what a flow pattern, a deformation flow pattern looks like. Convergence along one axis, divergence along another axis. Now a flow, a deformation, a pattern that's purely deformational has kind of an interesting property, and that is the net divergence is zero. In fact, if we go back to this idealized case, you can see I have some amount of fluid going towards this common point, and I have the same amount of fluid going away from that common point, which means the total divergence from that is zero. This is, in fact, a non-divergent flow pattern. A, that is, if it's purely deformational. Very often in the atmosphere, that's not actually the case, but usually to a good approximation, the, a deformation flow pattern is uh, effectively zero. Uh, the, the net divergence in a deformation pattern is effectively zero. But that's just something that's a property that's sort of important to keep in mind when you're looking at deformation flow pattern is an idealized deformation pattern will have a net divergence of zero. But as far as consequences in the atmosphere go, deformation flow patterns are actually very instrumental in the formation of fronts. And we'll talk a little bit more about this idea when we get into frontogenesis, which will be the topic of a later lecture. But just right now, be aware that deformation, these deformation flow patterns are really important in the uh, development and formation of fronts in the atmosphere, which, as we all know, fronts can give us some really interesting weather from time to time. And there's actually two mathematical parameters to quantify the amount of deformation that's present in the atmosphere. One is this parameter called stretching deformation. It's defined as d1, and that's equal to du dx minus dv dy. And at first glance, this might look a lot like the equation we had for delta, that is our horizontal divergence term, except here we have a negative sign instead of a positive sign. So that's it's basically divergence with a negative sign instead of a positive sign. And then this other one is called shearing deformation, and that's usually given as d subscript 2, and that's equal to dv dx plus du dy. And this might also look kind of familiar, and this is in fact uh, the vertical vorticity equation with a plus sign instead of a negative sign. So uh, some interesting mathematical shenanigans are going on here with the, the minus signs, the pluses signs, but the plus signs. But this is in fact how these two quantities are are defined. Stretching deformation d1 is equal to that. Shearing deformation d2 is equal to that. Now you might be wondering, is there really a, is there a difference between the two? Because you can see you have the two expressions here. Technically, yes. Uh, the difference, but the difference between the two isn't really that pronounced. It turns out that shearing deformation, this expression right here, is just the stretching deformation rotated 45 degrees. So d2 is basically just d1 rotated 45 degrees. And if you want a mathematical proof of that, it does exist, but it is very long and very complicated. Extra emphasis on long and complicated. It's several, several pages of lots of not-so-fun calculus. So if you really, really want to see that these two things are, in fact, 40, at 45-degree angles to each other, there is a mathematical substantiation to that. Or if you're like me and you just like, uh, if, after you've seen that proof, you're just like, yeah, I'll just 
take someone's word for it. If someone tells me it's 40 at a 45 degree angle, then uh, that's perfectly fine too. So if you want to just trust me on that, then that's perfectly fine. I definitely would not want anyone to reproduce that derivation because it's just really long and complicated. If you ever see it, you'll understand uh, what exactly I mean by that. But just uh, there is in fact a difference between the two. It's pure. It's really a mathematical difference. It's not much of a physical difference. Both of these represent deformation pattern, which is convergence along one axis, divergence along the other axis. It's just one of these is rotated 45 degrees. So really not much of a physical difference in the atmosphere. It's mostly just a mathematical thing. And if we want to take a look at a schematic that sort of represents this, so you can see how we have a flow pattern that's as it's going in one direction, it's converging, and then as it's going toward going along another direction, it's diverging. So the flow all wants to converge to a common point as we go in this direction. So it's not perfectly aligned to the axis, but it's pretty close. And then once we get towards that common point, as we go in the other direction, it starts diverging. So anytime you see a flow pattern that seems to at along one axis it goes towards a common point, and along another axis it goes away from a common point, then you're probably looking at a deformation pattern. And if we want to go back to the high, highly idealized schematic, this is what that flow pattern more or less looks like. Again, convergence along one axis, divergence along the other axis. So that's going to do it for this segment on deformation. And the next two segments, we'll take a look at some examples, some exercises to sort of test your understanding on the mathematics behind this kinematic flow pattern, these kinematic flow patterns. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.